My name is Jessica Volick. Uh, I am a research associate here at IHMC. My main focus here is the marine biology aspect of everything, of all the work that we do. So we do a lot of environmental stuff and underwater technology development, and I focus on the biological impact that it has. We got a joint grant with FWC to do uh, coral restoration monitoring. The Coral Restoration Foundation planted a bunch of Acropora cervicornis, which is staghorn coral, down in the Florida Keys. Uh, it is one of the most susceptible corals right now due to climate change and pollution and water temperatures rising. So it used to dominate most of the reefs down there, and now it is pretty much completely wiped out. The goal of our project is to use technology to more efficiently map these areas where they have planted the corals. We used an AUV, it's an autonomous underwater vehicle, and we strapped a camera onto it. And basically we took images, lots of small images, connected all of them, matched them all up, and created one giant map of the area. As far as I know, there's no other really great autonomous way, especially to just get an entire reef scale picture like we're getting. That's just like, you can go out and you can do, you know, you can monitor a coral, but it's just going to be that particular colony that gets monitored. It's not on that reef wide scale. So that's what's really cool about this. Um, it's a huge picture, it's a lot of data, and what we're using it for isn't all it's limited to. And so FWC put down tiles, markers, uh, measuring tools down on the reefs so they can use those later to look at the corals, see how much they've grown, if they're healthy, that kind of stuff. And they'll do that with the use of their own pictures and also the maps that we have created. The AUV that we used was from Rutgers University up in New Jersey. They have a Remus 100. We learned quite a bit. Uh, this was a um, challenging mission for uh, Remus. You know, typically, we operate Remus in uh, deep, open uh, waters. But in this case, we're operating in very shallow water. There are a lot of uh, obstructions, uh, outcroppings, uh, coral heads. Um, Sea states were kind of rough uh, on several days, and the area that we're in was, was also frequented a lot by recreational divers and, and snorkelers. So there's a lot of um, new things that we encountered uh, on this uh, uh, mission. Joe is the AUV operator, and he did all of the mission planning. He created the paths that Remus would take underwater. Before we could actually put Remus in the water, we had to drop transponders. We could not actually get a GPS signal through the water, but those transponders helped keep Remus going where it's supposed to go. Uh, up to 2,000 meters, we can use acoustic uh, communications. Uh, we have what we refer to as a ranging device, it has a tow fish, which also acts as a transponder. As we develop the mission, uh, we'll figure out an area uh, of coverage. Now there's a sweet spot that we like to work in. So if you, you look at a triangle, we can't work any closer to a baseline of, of the transponders than 150 degrees. And also out at the apex is about 15 degrees as far as uh, the internal angle on, on the, the apex. So within that area, we'll have the, the greatest precision of, of uh, navigation accuracy. We did take a drone out and fly that overhead, and we were able to watch Remus go along the reef with that. You could see her just cruising. You could watch her turn around, and it, it was pretty amazing to see how well Remus stayed on track and all the excitement that went on with watching her and watching the fish and the sharks chase after her. Everything went pretty well. Um, we did deal with wave action. The Remus just couldn't fight through those wave cells. The currents were too strong. Well, if there's wave action, you get some surge and it's gonna send the AUV going up and down a bit. Um, something that will, as Jessica put it, lay it out like a roller coaster. 
um, causing the imagery to come either too close or too far away. You don't quite get the overlapping that you were looking for to be able to stitch the photos together. So definitely need minimal, if we can get none, that'd be great, but minimal wave action, minimal surge. Well, we're working on methodology in the first place, so to hit these kinds of speed bumps is to be expected. I don't think that that comes as a surprise that we would have to go through that yeah, new technology. So we're sort of working out the kinks as we go. Uh, as with anything working in the field, we go through this quite often where we're sort of we think it's going to work. We've got an idea and we move forward with that plan and then we're like, okay, well, that didn't work. What went wrong? What can we fix? How can we mitigate this? and go from there, which is basically what we've done all week. We had, you know, one day of one issue. Okay, we won't have that issue again. The next day, maybe another issue. Um, coming out today more optimistic than ever, thinking like, well, we've really got a handle on this, and hopefully we do. As I said, I had a lot of concerns, and, uh, you know, it, thankfully, both groups seem to be aware of the fact that uh, this was a novel approach. Uh, this was a proof of concept operation. So we learned a lot, and uh, we're still processing the data, but we do believe that uh, we can uh, demonstrate how best to use an underwater vehicle for this type of operation. So a lot of this has been done manually with a scuba diver swimming in the same kind of Bostrophodon lawnmower pattern that we were doing. But they need humongous camera apparatuses. With that, it takes a lot of time. It's very hard to orient yourself underwater, especially in such a large area, and you can only swim so fast. We wanted to see if this was possible with an AUV in this type of an environment. And what we were trying to do was do this on a smaller scale with a readily available sports camera. And we were still able to create these detailed 3D maps. We believe that this could be a field deployable solution and we have made major headway in defining a methodology for autonomous underwater mapping of coral reef environments.